guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. Today I'm going to talk to you yet again about Story of the World. More specifically how I organize and set up and use Story of the World. So if you are interested in any of the other videos of why it's my favorite and the top points about it and an inside look at what a lesson looks like when I do it with my children, then I will link those videos down below. Along with this, I want to let you know that I am actually collaborating with my sweet friend Katie over at Life in the Mundane. If you have not checked out Katie's channel, you definitely need to. And I'm sure that she will have some amazing insight and ideas for organizing the same curriculum. So make sure to hop on over to Katie's channel. She has so many great videos on amazing resources for homeschooling, but also for biblical parenting and she's going to be showing how she sets up and organizes Story of the World as well. Now, when you get this curriculum, of course, you have the actual textbook, and this is Volume 1, which we used last year, and this is Volume 3, which we're using this year. And then you also, hopefully, have purchased the activity book. So, I highly, highly recommend using the activity book. You could, of course, use this just as a read aloud, but you're going to get so much more out of it if you use the activity guide. Now, what's included in here is um, basically like your teacher's guide. So it's going to have some different review questions, some cross references to different encyclopedias that coincide with what's taught in here, and also some different activities and even student sheets in here that are reproducible. Now, the student sheets for this curriculum are all in the back of the activity guide while all of the teacher information is in the front half of the book. Now, because of that layout, it can be a little bit cumbersome, especially when you want to go to make copies of any student sheets. Now, I have not done it to this one yet, not really sure why, but last year I was kind of over the fact that it was separated so much and I was flipping to and from student pages and teacher pages and I just wanted to simplify it for myself. So I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you how I organized it in this really simple way um, in just a binder. So I believe this is a one and a half inch binder. You could, um, you don't want any smaller than that because this is pretty thick. So either a one and a half inch or two inch binder will be perfect for this. So I'm gonna spin this camera around and show you what how I organized it inside this binder. Now, there are lots of different ways that you can organize this out. I really just wanted to keep it super simple and so this is how I did it. So this is, so I just cut the spine off of it and of course this is the front and then I put the back of the book in the back pocket. So when I open it up inside, I have all of my pages in order. Now, all I have done is to make it easier on myself. So let's start here with the introduction. So this is the first lesson that you do with your children. So what I did is I just put this in here in the order that it was, but I took the student pages that correspond with this lesson and I stuck it in here with it. I mean, super simple guys. It was just so easy for me to do something like that. So this is the student pages for this first part. Then we have chapter one and I've done the same. I just took the student pages that correspond and put them in here. Now, what I do is we don't always do every single student page. I choose based on the week, um, looking at what is in here. Um, I choose which pages I want to include in our lesson. Now, because of that, I, didn't, I don't make copies of every single thing, and I actually wait to make the copies. Um, I make copies one or two weeks at a time just to ensure that I'm making copies of only the things that I want to use. So, what I do is I just open it up, stick it in my printer, make the copies, and put it in my children's notebooks. They all have binders as well that they keep their science and history and Bible work in. And um, so I just put those in there or I put them in my mom binder to pass out to them when it is time for our lesson. 
So that's how I do it. It's so simple. Now the next thing, even more simple, is I use a divider. So say we just finished lesson 12, okay? We just finished lesson 12 and I wanna make it easier on myself to turn to chapter 13, the day of our lesson. So if I'm opening up my book, I can just open it up and grab that divider tab and there we are. So I just move this around according to whichever lesson that we're on. Um, and so it's super simple that way. So there you have it, super simple, straightforward. That's how I organize it all. Um, I go through the week of, or a couple of weeks before, go through the chapters we're gonna be looking at and I pull out any um, literature selections that we might want to use as well. So, like I said, I keep it super simple. With all that said, I cannot wait to go check out how Katie does it. I love how organized she is as well. Um, I think it's important for us to find our own way of organizing things, and I love to hear the way other people do because I like to see if it'll fit for my needs. So make sure you head over there after this is done. I also want to give a little shout out to my friend Yasmin from Mommy on the Move. She actually just released an overview of Story of the World. It's kind of a quick start um, guide for busy moms on Story of the World. So if you're curious what it all entails, I will link her video down below as well so you can check her out. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys and I hope that you have a blessed day. Click that subscribe button and that like button and I hope to see you on future videos. Thanks so much guys.